Ahoy hoy, it's your boy Attack Slug, and I'm here with You Should Be Playing, a video series where I recommend games that I think everyone should be playing. Uh, obviously, if you don't have the system, then I can't help you, but if you have the system, these are games you should be playing, and today, as you can see, we're looking at Tokyo Jungle for the PS3, a downloadable release from 2012, developed by Krispies uh, in association with Sony through the PlayStation Camp program. Uh, and that, that, that is a program where Sony is looking for talented, small developers who can't perhaps handle, a, you know, a game of certain sizes on their own, and they, you know, give them funding and help and, you know, stuff. Anyway, Tokyo Jungle, uh, one of my, my favorite games on PSN. Um, I've spent many, many hours. Uh, I didn't quite unlock everything, but I unlocked most of the things. So, uh, we're gonna jump in here. We're not gonna do story. Um, the story stuff is alright. Uh, it gets really weird, like it's a really weird kind of a sci-fi type deal, um, but once you play through it once, it's not, you know, particularly interesting to play through again, um, but just know that it is there, uh, and it is how you unlock some of the stuff that you want to unlock in the game, and, you know, get, like, the ending credits and everything else. But, the main draw of Tokyo Jungle is the survival mode, um, whereas, uh... I'm just gonna hit new game here, and, uh, hit a single player here, and, uh, alright, so... This game, some would say, has certain roguelike elements, and I guess I kind of agree with that. Um, not completely, but, um, we do get a choice of a shit ton of animals. And as you can see, I don't have the mammoth, because he costs that, that many points, and I don't have that many points. And I don't have the robot dogs, because they cost way too many points. That's half a million fucking points. It's crazy. Uh, and the ones you see... In the red here, and the question marks, I want you guys to actually buy uh, in the shop. And I did not buy the alligator. Um, they come in packs of three or four. So if you buy the kangaroo, giraffe, and alligator, they're all in the same you know pack for a couple of bucks. But nah, I was not interested in doing that. Um, also, some of the animals have different uh, varieties. They all have this, you know, this. You can see the stats here are all the same. But I, I wanted to unlock a different color rabbit. Guess what? I totally can. And so I spent points unlocking a different rabbit. But I'm not going to use the rabbit because I'm not going to play uh, right away as a herbivore. We're going to play as a carnivore. Uh, and what I was using to unlock a lot of these guys, to get the points to unlock them, uh, was Mr... Where is he now? I can't find him. Panther. So you can see there, in the red, um, when you play the game, it has permadeath. So when you die, you are dead. But the stats you gain from playing increase the base stats of your character. So, uh, the red here is the extensions that I made in the Panther as a top predator. So we're gonna jump in here, uh, and play a little bit of Tokyo Jungle, uh, which is a fantastic game. Uh, it is 15 bucks on the PSN store. It's been on sale a bunch of times. Um, and here we are, we're a Panther. So, um, right away we got Slash. We got jump, we got, um, I'm trying to remember, remember, actually remember the controls now. So, uh, if I recall correctly, that's, alright, that's, the right stick uses your other attack, you can do that, and then when you kill animals, then, uh, you stand over them, and you eat them. And they turn into bones. Uh, so, uh, this game is entirely dictated on a couple things, one of which is marking your territory, uh, which is a thing that you have to do, you know, uh, and the other main thing, uh, that dictates the permadeath stuff is your hunger meter. And the bigger of a predator that you are, the, I fucked that up, the, uh, faster your hunger meter is going to decrease. And I want to kill this rabbit. Um, and then there are challenges. So the challenges, uh... Or if I recall correctly, just slash him, whatever. Um, the challenges are the same pretty much every time, uh, but the challenges depend on uh, what you're playing as, I think. Uh, it's been a while since I've actually booted this up, because I played way too many hours unlocking all these animals. And yes, at the 30 hour mark-ish, it does get tedious. Um, but before that, you know, 
for, 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 for 15 bucks, the fact that I got 30 hours out of this is fucking amazing. Um, this actually was a full-priced retail release in Japan, uh, if I recall correctly. Um, some my goals here, uh, like my challenge list, is I want to change my de de generation, which is mating, uh, defeat 20 animals, and head for the Shibuya Woods. And I want to do this all within um, the um, yeah. All right, this is this is in the uh, 10 year mark. So. You can see here at the top of my screen there is time, and we are almost in year two. I want to get those goals completed by year ten uh, for those ch challenges to be complete. So, uh, the more animals you eat, the more points you get, and the more points you get, the higher your rank is. And rank is important because the higher rank you have, the better females that you can mate with. And then the more offspring you uh, will produce. So the distribution of the enemies and the distribution of any of the things that you need for you know uh, the course of the game, that stuff is randomized. So you're not going to get that stuff um, the same every time. And we have hearts here in our territory. Uh, but we are still a rookie, so I have to rank up because that is a prime female. Um, and I don't know that there are going to be enough animals here to get me enough points. Because it's mostly, you know, rabbits and chickens and uh, that kind of stuff. Now we're in year three. Um, there is a bit of a day-night cycle. Um, you have stamina you got to worry about. Um... And there are items that will occasionally drop from uh, your kills. Now normally, I mean obviously these guys are all you know on a much lower level than I am. The longer you're playing the game, the more powerful animals uh, will spawn. And I can't mate with either of these uh, lovely ladies, so we're going to explore some more here and hopefully we can... Uh, rank up a little bit. Um, so you can see here the amount of food here in Dogenzaka. Uh, you can you can um, look at the different areas. You know, some, some of them have certain events, and those events can be randomized, or those events are based on the challenges that you are c currently playing. Um, I am still a rookie here, and I really want to get outside of being a rookie, uh, considering that I marked all of my territory. Um, but food is not really, like, I can go up to Shibuya Woods and, and look for more food, but, like, I want to get this stuff done before year 10, and it's not looking great right now. But, you know, as I said, uh, your game experience is going to be a little bit different uh, every time you play it. Let's kill this dog here and eat him. Obviously, you know, this is early on, so the animals really aren't as powerful as my badass uh, panther guy here. So if you complete all the challenges in, say, a certain animal's uh, deal, there we go, alright, now I'm a veteran. It's just, for good measure, get rid of this sheep. Alright, now I've got to run back because we're already ap approaching year 5 here. Um, there is a bit of a balance in knowing what upcoming challenges are so you can have things done ahead of time, uh, and that is part of the challenge in the game, is having to micromanage a lot of the different things that are going to be happening, you know, your life, your hunger, your stamina, your missions, uh, where the food is, you know, what's your next, because you can look at your uh, next set of challenges here, so you can kind of say, okay, I need to be at this place by year 20, so after you do these, these, these three challenges, and say, you know, you did should be your woods and whatnot. You want to start heading here, and hopefully you accomplish things on the way that you get there. Um, so here we go. I got a, I got, I got the average female because I did not uh, go up to boss status. Um, one of the tricks here is that uh, the water you can refill your hunger uh, through the water, but it will not refill your stamina. Or your life. 
uh, for that matter. So every area has a nest or two, uh, and we're going to mate here, uh, which is always a little like, hey, wait, what? Video game? You're kind of, all right, if you say so, video game, and then the controller shakes. And then now, uh, your parents will stay here, and now there are three of you. So the better female that you mate with, uh, you get more offspring. I think it's like one, three, and five. All right, so we've changed generations one time. It is going into year six. Our other challenge here is to get to Shibuya Woods, and Shibuya Woods is, uh, we gotta go through Dogenzaka to get to Shibuya Woods. So, uh, when you change, when you change generations, you will notice that, uh, the food things here change, like the amount of food in each area. There's a bunch more in Dogenzaka now. Um, a lot of that is also just the changing of the years, so how they affect the enemy di distribution uh, is based on how many years have passed, because eventually it's going to be game over, because eventually uh, the food runs out, and um, there are enemies that I won't spoiler, but there are enemies that you cannot kill um, at the very end, so making it past 100-something years is an achievement, uh, and it, I, I'm pretty sure it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a trophy, um, but making it past 100 years is, uh, you know, that you're not getting much farther than that, unfortunately. Um, so, still watch rabbits. Um, I got some hunger, so I'm gonna stop here for a second. Uh, got a present, which is flea shampoo. So, uh, the items... I don't remember how to get that. Item... What button was it? I'm just under here. I'm sorry. Okay, so, the other thing in this game is that it is a very weirdly Japanese game, so, uh, you can have things for your pets. Not, not pets, but... You can, you can put things on that will affect your status stuff here. Uh, you can put on a ninja outfit, or you can put on a hip-hop shirt, and you can, I don't have any shoes right, right now. And, uh, those things you buy in the shop, um, and you use your in-game points to buy those things in the shop. You have to unlock them first, and they're all randomized, um, so actually unlocking everything is, uh, something that I, I did not do, uh, because after, after 30 hours, I was good. Um, so, the advantage to having, uh, you and your brothers and sisters here, um, or whatever they may be, is that when my character dies, then, uh, one of them will take place of that. And I'm gonna get fucked up here. I don't have time for this. It's already year seven. I don't have time for this. Get the fuck out of here. Um, so, your right stick is your instant action, like, kind of a pounce type deal, um, and that, uh, is super useful, um, so, uh, we didn't defeat 20 animals yet, so we hit Shibuya Woods, we're gonna attack this boar here, and we're gonna avoid these fucking dogs trying to mess us up here, um, and costing us some health, there we go, we, defe we, we, we defeated 20 animals, I still can't 100% remember what the controls are, because it's been a while. And that's one of those things I really should, uh... I mean, it's kind of a time constraint in terms of how I, how I record these videos, but, uh, I feel like I, I should probably be more prepared when I actually do this stuff. Certainly for this video series, not so much for the other ones, where it's more of an adventure in remembering how, remembering how to play. But, uh... You will encounter things like poison, you will encounter things like drought, you will encounter, uh, different uh, status effects for your character here. And so having items, um, and I can't remember what button brings up the... Hold on. D-pad? D-pad, alright. So flea shampoo gets rid of fleas. Uh, you only really get fleas if you mate with an undesirable female. Um, and if you have any kind of a decent rank, then that won't happen. Uh, and the water, you know, refills your hunger gauge and reduces your toxicity, which becomes important, uh, later in the game. So, we have finished our three challenges for uh, the first ten years. Now we have intake, calories, mark nine times, and head for Yamanote Line West. Now, the thing here is that you cannot complete these until after the ten year mark. So, these first two, there's no point in even trying, um, because you can't do them yet. But this one, if we head there, and we're there when the year changes over to year 20, then we totally, uh, instantly get that, uh, thing. And that's probably where I'm gonna end this video, 
because uh, a full playthrough, like if you know what you're doing and you're playing good, a full playthrough is like 45 minutes to an hour depending on how good you're doing. And I don't want to make videos quite that long. That's kind of insane if you ask me. Um, that and the fact that when I do when I do my rendering in Adobe Premiere, um, it kind of gets weird. It was over a certain length, so I try to keep them under 40 minutes, uh, preferably in the 20 to 30 minute range. So we are gonna head to uh, kill this boar because we're getting hungry here. Uh, you don't have to worry about the hunger of your siblings. You can switch to them at any time. I don't remember what button that is. Uh, this, hold on. Actually, let's just look at here at the um, da, 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 R1's creep kill. Uh, move, dodge, roar, item window. Triangle? No, I guess not. I'm pretty sure that there's a button. Oh, sorry. So, the creep kill is you're going to creep along here. Creep along, creep along, creep along. Wait for the Red Fangs! Clean kill. And there are certainly achievements and there are challenges that are related to getting a clean kill. Um, it is a thing that is important. Uh, so uh, eventually, much more dangerous animals are going to show up, um, but we are still too early for that. Um, sometimes certain animals will only hang out in certain areas of the map. Um, I think I just went the wrong way. This, this area is very complicated in terms of how they laid it out. Um, and purposely so. Uh, so we're going to head through these abandoned buildings. Uh, so the plot of this game is that humanity uh, has vanished. And the animals have reclaimed the world. And that's a boss pig. Alright. Can I kill that boss pig? Maybe not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, god damn it. Bite him. Eat the boss pig, yeah. Alright, so we ate the boss pig. Uh, that doesn't do anything for our... You know, what, what, we're, what we're currently doing, but... Um, every little bit helps. So the challenge in this game, certainly, uh, when you've played a lot of it, uh, in the early goings, is not particularly hard. Um, obviously that depends on the animal. Um, certainly playing the er herbivores, uh, it is much much more difficult um because they, they can only eat plants so there's there's no animals to hunt you gotta avoid other animals trying to eat you um and that stuff is crazy um so there are certainly uh different play styles uh so we're on west or we're on east we gotta hit west so you gotta keep, keep going straight here um when you when you get to the 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 timeline and you start seeing the bears and the alligators and the dinosaurs yes there are dinosaurs in this game there are Velociraptors and shit. It is it is insane. Uh, this game gets real. There's a hippo. Hungry, hungry hippo. Oh, it's the fucking lions. All right, so that that is a lion. Lions will mess you up, um, pretty badly. But considering that I have increased my stats high enough, uh, if I get a clean kill, I can totally knock out a lion, um, which is nice. There's some deer that I don't want to mess with. What's up, deer? Um, there's probably some more lions in the area. Some hyenas and jackals and shit. Um, I'm just not gonna fuck. Yeah, I'm bigger than you. Don't. I have a I have a hip hop shirt on. Fuck you. Um, don't. There's an alligator. Don't you know I'm loco? All right, so uh, we're gonna head here to this uh, additional area, and we're gonna hope that the challenge is active. And then we will get that. Don't want to fuck those guys. Just keep, just keep jumping. Just keep jumping. Um, I'm still on east. All right, I gotta hit west. Very. All right, so we hit west. We got that. We're at 12 years. There's some food here, but not a lot. Uh, I'm supposed to mark nine times and uh, intake uh, that many calories. It's probably not gonna happen in the scope of this video, but. Uh, I've kind of shown you the basics of how this game uh, is supposed to go, um, more or less. Uh, certainly, you know, it gets much more complex the further you play it. I just don't necessarily have the time or the video space to show that in a single video. Um, but rest assured, 
I fucked that up. Rest assured, uh, this is a game that I think you should be playing uh, if you like uh, weirdly Japanese action games, um, if you like po post-apocalyptic scenarios in, in, in involving animals, and uh, if you generally like downloading weird games that are only available because you would not be able to you, you would not do well trying to sell this as a retail product is what I'm saying um, so that's gonna do it here uh, I'm actually gonna jump out I'm gonna quit um, and I will show you what they do I mean it's got rankings it's got online leaderboards you know per day and whatever else um, the difficulty of the animals they throw at you depends on what animal you choose. Um, and I will just jump in here to the um, Act 1 here uh, and show a little bit of that and how that works. Um, there is, you know, story involved and you have to, you know, you're supposed to be doing stuff to accomplish the story. Um, and you're playing as this Pomeranian, which is hilarious uh, for those of you who've played Anything from Capcom like Ghost Trick or uh, Attorney Investigations, uh, Pomeranians are awesome. Um, they are hilarious. Um, so yeah, there's some s story beats in here, and the story does go in some cra- Like, it's worth playing through once, because the story does go in some crazy places. Um, it does get kind of nuts, um, and I really enjoy that, that part of it. Uh, but... Now it's going to give us uh, objectives to accomplish. Um, I'm saying, hey, you got to eat. Your first day with no pet food is come and gone. You are starving. <sighs> got to find a rabbit to eat. Or, you know, I guess some of that water uh, would help. So it's like, hey, water. But yeah, pamper to survival mode. So the game pretty much, you know, will teach you how to hunt. You can hide in the grass here and... Uh, your prey will not see you. Um, they do have a like like a, a, a line of sight type deal. So if, if I actually sneak around behind him, um, and then running uh, certainly does attract more attention than creeping. So there we go, clean kill. And we're just gonna you know feast on his bones here. Uh, That's a a neat effect that I enjoy. Um, so we're just gonna quit out of here. Um, just, I just want to show a little bit of that, uh, to say that it is there, there is some story stuff, uh, but the main draw of this game is the survival mode, which is, uh, super enjoyable, and I liked it a lot. And I played, like, 30 hours of it, which is, for me, is a lot. Um, for any one game, I tend to get bored pretty easily. Um, anyway, uh, this is a tax slug. Uh, this is You Should Be Playing, and this is Tokyo Jungle. Now, if you want to see... My good buddy Grim failed terribly at Tokyo Jungle. We did an episode of this game a couple of months back, and I will leave that link in the, in the description. Uh, so go watch him be terrible at it uh, in the show we do every Friday. And uh, I will see you next time right here on this channel, Attack Slug, and I'm out.